Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of WTF Live. This is episode number 42 Two. coming at you. Woohoo! I know, incredible, <laughs> right? 42 weeks later, and here we are. Thank yes. you, everybody, for joining us today. And anyone who is watching this in the replay, today we have yet another exciting topic. It is designer feature today. We do this every month. It's one of our mm -hmm. favorite episodes, and we can't wait to share some of our favorite designers with you guys today. Yes. All right, take it away, Vita. Okay. You go. <laughs> I'll go first. Yeah. So today, um, one of the designers that I'm choosing to highlight today is um, Daniela Hoffer of Daniela Hoffer Interiors. We just recently started working with um, Daniela's design firm. So it's been a really great um, collaborated effort and the couple of projects that we've done so far. What I love about Daniela is that she has this whole big, she has this team with her and um, Everyone from Brit and, and on the team has, is just really lovely and great to work with. I love um, how she even, she brings in her clients too on the whole window treatment side of things. Hey, Gina. Hi, out there. Gina. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just watching her collaborate with her clients on the appointments and on site and just seeing the different fabrics that they'll pick. They really go for it when it comes to the fabrics on the window treatments. They're not afraid of using pattern. And the project that I want to highlight is one that we just installed um, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So what Lovely. we have, yes, what we have here are some mock Roman valances with some roller shades um, underneath. Now this is a um, Kelly Wurzler fabric. So you can see this very like geometric pattern. kind of, you know, abstract type of pattern so it was fun like trying to figure out where to center that pattern and making sure even though the valances were two different sizes mm -hmm. um making sure that the thicker part of the fabric hit that center mullion line on all the windows so at least that was consistent so right. nicely um, done i can see that, that that's a yeah. big part of repeat the thicker part the fat part of the repeat is yeah, right the, there in the center so the repeat real there was really like a central part of this pattern so um yeah so that was something that i just thought you know this could be really cool just making sure that it lines up with something architecturally in the window and then it became the discussion of daniela wanted the valances up a little higher to make it feel like the room is up higher and so we install these valances that are about 22 inches long. I don't remember off the top of my head. I apologize. And then the clients just needed a little bit of privacy um, for their neighbors. Um, they, the drive, their driveway and their neighbor's driveway kind of meet up. So they didn't want to feel like that they're waving at their neighbors when they're sitting down watching TV in their family room. So we popped some light filtering gray roller shades underneath. Are the roller shades on the windows right now or are they behind or they rolled up? So you can kind of see them a little bit. They're peeking out a little bit underneath. Oh, okay, okay. So gotcha. it's a kind of like where you see that little layer. And we put those inside yeah. the window. We, sure. we did those as an inside mount. And so when they're up, they're hidden under the Roman valance. Mm -hmm. And this way you don't see them. So it's only, they only really bring them down when they need the privacy. So mm -hmm. that's what I really love about doing like a, a treatment like this is that it's like a two-part treatment. You have your le level of pretty, which we all want, but then sometimes we need to get that whole functionality so and you know the, it isn't always the case that we sometimes have to give up forgo the pretty i say for function mm -hmm. um but in this case we were able to incorporate both oh, you did a great job and Thank i really you. like how she combined this really uh, funky geometric pattern with very architectural ceiling yes yeah very that's what i said nice, she's not really afraid to done. go there with with patterns so that's that's what i'm loving about it Nicely done. Hope this relationship prospers for you guys. I hope so too. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay, so next designer is someone that I had chosen. This is Jenny Pritzker Interiors. And uh, uh, full disclosure, we do not do any window treatments for her currently, but it is somebody that I have been following on Instagram and social media and somebody that I've come to admire and respect as I see her work mm -hmm. and I see her around the industry too. 
So she is based in Philadelphia, right in Center City in Rittenhouse Square. And um, that's primarily where she works, even though she does venture out outside mm -hmm. of the city too on the main line and other suburbs as well. What's interesting about her is that she first went, her first degree is not in interior design. Interior design um, came in later as master's from Drexel, also Philadelphia-based school. But her initial degree was in art um, semiotics i have to if you guys don't know what semiotics is don't worry neither did i i still don't 100 percent understand it but i had <laughs> yeah. to look it up <laughs> okay it is it is the art of science and the study of of science the way i understood it okay um, science as in like s-i-g-n-s okay okay so um Jenny, I would love to hear more and learn more about that that <laughs> degree and, and you know what that was all like. And especially there's a whole slew of information on internet on how to use semiotics in interior design and how it helps and how it just it, it was just really mm -hmm. fascinating to try to dive into it a little bit and in that li little depth that I was able to go to before saying, Oh my gosh, I don't understand. So <laughs> I can't wait to have that conversation with Jenny. Anyway. So, um, but what I found interesting is like many other interior designers, this is their second career. It's not something that they started mm -hmm. off with, but they decided or they felt the passion, they felt the calling, they've had some success for themselves or neighbors, friends and relatives. And then they ultimately decided to pursue this as, as a career and with, with further education. So I really respect Jenny for that and all other designers who chose to do that because I think pursuing a second career is is difficult and it takes a lot of guts. So you you go girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, so another interesting fact about Jenny is that she started off her career with working for Marguerite Rogers, who is um, a really well-known designer here in the Philadelphia area. She worked for her for quite a few years, but then ultimately decided to branch off on her own, which is really a testament to both Jenny and Marguerite about uh, their relationship together and how one was allowing the other one to spread the wings. And uh, Jenny in her bravery and courage to do something on her own. So lots of uh, testaments there in her life and in her sort of trend in her life on how courage really um, takes center stage, which mm -hmm. I, I think is, is, is important too. So also something important to note is not only did she pursue the second career, she got her master's from Drexel, but she then um, then went on to pursue her um, NCIDQ exam, which is just that additional level, a very high level of certification in interior design industry. And uh, this is when you can be NCIDQ um, certified and she's also a member of ASID. So this is just that, um, not just, this is the highest level of, of interior design that you can have in our industry and to pass that exam is kind of like a bar or <laughs> or, yeah. or the CPA it's, exam it's, it's really difficult it's no so, joke it's definitely no joke so the fact the fact that she was able to do that again shows shows a lot of courage a lot of determination a lot of discipline and whenever I see women who have those qualities I just highly respect them and I have to highlight them so 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 there's that and this is the project that I wanted to highlight so I, I said earlier that she is based Jenny is based in Center City Philadelphia and just like any city there are lots of high rises in our city I actually just came back from it like five minutes ago like I strolled into the, into the <laughs> I'm like, is my hair okay? Okay, I'm good. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but yeah, I had to drive into the city. So I was just among all of those high rises. And they are famous or noted, notable for their for their windows and for the beautiful mm -hmm. views. So these windows that you're seeing here is something that is very prevalent in a lot of condominiums that we have here in Center City. And the question is always, well, how do you how do you protect them? How do you um how do you preserve the view, but at the same time have the the aesthetic of the room elevated and, you know, have everything that window treatments really do for you, which is, you know, functionality, aesthetic, beauty, texture, color, all those good things. So a lot of times what we end up doing, and that's what Jenny um, did here as well, is we put those roller shades in. So very similar mm -hmm. to what you, um, Kim, did in the, your previous example, but this being the high, the bigger windows, higher windows in those high rises, this is where roller shades are really kind of the main player. Mm -hmm. And they, 
uh, there are two main reasons for it. Number one is because with the shade down, you can still still see through and you can still mm -hmm. see the view. And number two is when you don't want to have them down, they can roll up into a small cassette and you barely know that they're there. Yeah. So, and then yet the third reason that I thought she did a, a great job selecting this particular style is because you can see the whole uh, um, design style of the room is kind of contemporary, maybe even mid-century modern with those clean lines, some of uh, some some curvular lines. So perhaps to do any kind of a elaborate drapery, maybe it wouldn't have quite gone with the style of what she was trying to do for this client here. So kind of like when in doubt, going with the roller shade when you're working in the sky rise in mm -hmm. the city, I mean, you can never go wrong. So you, you have your view, it disappears into a cassette and you're not bombarded with the abundance of fabric or texture here. So this was this was a very smart, practical decision by Jenny. So for all those reasons, I wanted to highlight her. And uh, also as a member director of our ASID Philadelphia chapter, I'm always really excited to highlight um, our chapter members. So. Oh, there There's you Jenny. go. There you yeah, go. Ni nicely done, Jenny. Yeah, I like the always, I mean, we always use, not always, but a good chunk of the time when we're in a high-rise building, especially with the view, especially when we have projects in like, you know, Jersey City, Hoboken, right on the water, that your view is the Manhattan skyline, that you were like, you, you, you pay those big bucks for those apartments for those killer views. And, yeah. you know, you need the sun protection, you want to protect all that beautiful furniture, all that beautiful upholstery that she has selected there. And it's like, well, what can I do when I need, like, you have all these things that you want to make sure you have to check off the list. So that's why, I like, the solar screens that she picked here are a very good go-to. So very smart. smart. Hashtag smart lady. Smart, 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 smart. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me when my son was little. Sorry, little change in here. When he was little, he had, like, we had a little robot. It was about this big, and there were, like, little cards. And, you know, you're supposed to guess something or say something. Or he was supposed to recognize something. And you put it in, and there was a chip, and the robot goes, smart, 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 smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what that popped into my head. Sorry. <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> smart decision. <laughs> All right. Moving on from my okay. little tangent here. <laughs> okay. So um, the next design uh, uh, designers that I want to highlight, it's actually a design uh, team. Um, the firm is called Mimi and Hill, and we have Hillary and Miriam here. Their firm is based out of Westfield, New Jersey. Uh, we're actually working with them for the first time ever for a project in the city. Um, but I have been fans of theirs for a while now. Um, with you know, with Instagram, you really it, that's the great thing about social media is that you really can get exposed to a lot of different designers out there and a lot of different talent. So, um, you know. 10 years ago, you weren't really able to do that. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> you should be like, smart, 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 yeah. smart, smart. <laughs> that will be our tagline. <laughs> um, so what's, what's great about Instagram, like I remember when House first came out, you know, and that's how you really got to like get exposed to different interior designers in the area. And then you had Facebook and then there's Instagram. So you feel like you get to know a lot of people social mm. like through social media i had a designer in here the other day and i was like i feel like i know you and she's like we, <laughs> we correspond back and forth on instagram i said well then there you go like there we're, go. we're right. social media friends but now we're like real life you know getting to meet each other in real life mm -hmm. so with mimi and how i've been following their um instagram uh page for um a while now and uh when we got the call to collaborate on a project i was really really excited because they are super talented they have these really great projects a lot of design inspiration and um to your testament like what you said before vita mm -hmm. uh, their interior design firm it's a second career they come from a fashion interior publishing background and they started their firm wow. in 2011 um and right on their website when you go on their website they have a quote that it says more than beautiful spaces and mm -hmm. it is the truth like you can tell all the detail and all the um the hard work that goes behinding behind creating these beautiful spaces because it's not just like let's pick a sofa let's pick a fabric call it a day it's like there's little details in there I, they have these bar stools on one project that kind of made me stop in my tracks that you had a solid fabric and then within the cutout of the bar stool 
you have this really cool print. So it's just little simple kind nice. of details that you're going to see um, that you'll see a, a lot of in their work. So be sure to check them out on Instagram. And the project that really stopped me in my tracks was this library project because uh -huh. I love a monochromatic space like this. It's hard to tell in the picture, but this the the paint uh the paint on these bookcases and the uh window seat cushion and basically the entire room is um this like high lacquered mm -hmm. gloss that's yep, on there so just mm -hmm. yeah, so really i it, it really makes it pop and i i love the look of like all the moldings all the baseboards everything being painted the same i did something similar to this in my house in my family room where my fireplace my cabinetry my built-ins the the moldings it's all painted the same color and kind of disappeared you have so, to send me a picture kim yeah 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 <laughs> oh, soon soon i have to finish the window not, treatments not in there yet. you know yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh really when you do yeah. window treatments <laughs> we think about ourselves last right <laughs> yeah yeah so do you know somebody who can help me with that oh, trust um, me. <laughs> do you know somebody who can help me <laughs> We're so classic for, cases, right? Of uh, what yeah. is it? Uh, the cobbler's uh, something, something. Shoemaker's yes. kids. Or that's shoemaker's right. Kids. That's yeah. right. So, <laughs> total, you know, total disclosure, everyone out there. Um, my window treatment game in my own personal house is looking a little sad. Hopefully, I can, you know, focus on that in the summer and kind of get it done and ready. And when we do, I'll feature it here. I'll show you all the different, like, kind of nudgy things and whatever. But I digress. So with this, I just really liked the um, the pops of color and the, like you see the orange that's in the space there. And so it just, it's a complementary color to the teal. And yes, it's a simple Roman shade, but to me, it just all kind of pulls it together. So is it a Roman shade or is it a woven wood? It's hard to tell in the picture. In the picture, in the picture online, it looked like a Roman shade. Yeah. So, um, like sheerish Roman shade. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I just love. Cause when you're looking at this, it's like, whoa, you just have that little touch of orange that really right. just draws your eye. I know people Kim, if you need them, I think you Gina. <laughs> um, so that's, that's what I love is that you're going to get this kind of look, this kind of aesthetic, this kind of attention to detail when you're working with Mimi mm -hmm. and Hell. And they have a really great team of designers with them. They have two, um, two designers on staff and they have a whole bunch of project managers. So you're really working with high end, super professional teams. So. Nice, nice. Yeah. I, I you, we, you, we've said this many times before, and I'm sure we'll say it many times again. We we'll love ourselves some designers who love taking risks. Yes, and there's definitely a project where lots of risks were taken. And mm -hmm. even though you know when you use the word monochromatic, sometimes maybe it may have kind of like a boring um, connotation. But really, if you think about it, it's just all one color, whether it's beige mm -hmm. or this high gloss teal. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's still monochromatic, and to use a high gloss teal color like that in the library or office uh, it's just it's really cool and it certainly is high risk and then to pair it with a, a really color that stands out and add contrasting piping to it I mean you need to have some guts so go ladies yeah, yeah kudos to them nicely done so my next team my next design is actually a team um Daryl and Emily <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, like, yep, exactly. Yep, mine is a team as well. <laughs> and uh, so this is uh, Daryl Baker and um, Emily Posey. They're based in um, Meadowbrook in here in Montgomery County, not too far from us, outside of Philadelphia. And what makes them really unique in their own right and positioning is that Daryl is an architect and Emily is an interior designer. So Daryl went to a Temple and studied architecture there, and Emily graduated mm -hmm. from Moore. So both are Philadelphia based local colleges around here. And uh, just like the previous designer, Jenny, uh, Emily is also NCIDQ certified. So again, the highest level certification level in interior design, a test that is very hard to pass, that is like a bar exam for, for lawyers. So kudos to you, Emily. Yes, exactly. So of course, 
so Kim, when when you, you and I have had the many conversations like that, mm -hmm. or maybe we've you know sighed and huffed and puffed mm -hmm. about um, an, an architect putting a window like right next to a wall, and there's no way to put a curtain there, right? Or or some other detail. We're like, oh my gosh, who architected this house, right? Yeah. <laughs> and usually it's done from the outside, not the inside. Well, here's the thing: when you have a team like this, an interior designer and an architect, stuff like that won't happen because. Nope. For, for obvious reasons, right? Because yeah. it's not just designed from the outside, it's inside, it's everything is kind of in combination and 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 collaboration. The one thing that really s stands out for me with this firm, and uh, also full disclosure, we did not do window treatments for them. We don't work with them currently, but it is mm -hmm. somebody that I've been following on social media and they've recently launched their new website, which is really great. So I highly recommend everybody checks them out at bakerposey.com and what what they say about themselves is the word that they use a lot in their in their bio i think maybe two or three times is personal relationships with clients and they mm -hmm. really tout the fact that it's not that the client is working with an intern or an assistant or somebody else in their office the client gets them the client gets their talent and their skill and their intuition and that sixth sense so it's, it's a team that really brings their A game to every single project that they do. And their projects are incredible. There are a lot of before and after pictures on their website. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing research on them, I found myself just sort of uh, like, like kind of going like this <laughs> and really um, like, like time stood still for, for a little while because I completely lost myself in their befores and afters and all of their beautiful projects. And I know, Kim, we don't usually do this, but because their projects are so unique, I wanted to highlight one of the houses that they've designed, the exterior of the house, which I thought was so unique. I actually mm -hmm. know exactly where that house is. Okay. When I pass by it, I have a couple of clients just down the street. It's in Bernathan. And every time I pass by that house, like I am, I'm in complete awe. I'm one of those um, stalkers, I think, <laughs> who would stop by the house and just kind of <laughs> stare at it for maybe like half a minute or so before people start thinking I'm weird. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but here's, here's something that they themselves say about this, which I thought was so um, in incredible that I, I have to quote them on it. So they're saying that the homeowners were originally torn between the classic lines of post and beam construction and the newer contemporary designs. So what Daryl and Emily decided to do instead of pick one versus another, they've decided to combine the two. So you see the door and you see the roof and that's really the example of that post and beam construction. Mm -hmm. And they combine it with more of the modern lines, which you see on the, like in the garage lines and above and to the left of the door there too. So you can see that they chose the materials and colors and spaces um, to the left and the right. They kind of sing contemporary, but that timber framing um, of the roof structure, what they're saying pays homage to the post and beam intent and adds warmth and sense of hand craftsmanship. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I think they've just hit the nail on the head right there. So, but moving on to window treatments. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a dining room that I wanted to highlight. It's one of the projects of their developed this uh, this this whole look in terms of furnishings and colors mm -hmm. and fixtures and finishes. So there there's a couple of mood boards on this specific project, and that was really interesting to see. And I really liked how they combined darker tones in some furniture pieces with lighter tones of the soft upholstery and some of the wainscoting and then of course that soft teal color they've put into the ceiling and into the draperies and on the artwork on the left so um, beautiful very nicely done simple understated panels on each side of the window framing that window but it's really that color palette that plays off of other elements in the room and uh, I just I find it incredibly just incredible really that they can build a house from the ground up mm -hmm. they can pour the foundation and they can architect the entire house and they can combine all sorts of finishes together and 
um, have these different architectural styles playing so nicely together and they can start from a hole in the ground and take it all the way out to window treatments. And that's mm -hmm. an amazingly talented and skilled yeah. Uh, firm right here in our backyard in Philadelphia. So um, just just really, really respecting them for everything that they've done. Yeah, it's a lot. We have a couple of um, design, like architect build type firms that we work with that they start from the ground up and do, you know, the outside in. And yeah. to your point, they think about things of the windows and, you know, they start thinking about, okay, so if we want to do Roman shades that are cordless control and we need about two and a half inches on the board, or they'll call us ahead of time and go, we're thinking of doing these products. How much of an inside mount do we need? And Bingo, right there. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's so that smart. whole, yeah, that whole attention to detail that, um, you know, when they're, builder architects that aren't really involved in the whole interior side of it don't really think of that so it's very refreshing or you know before they put up sheetrock they know they want to motorize the space where should i put the outlets what kind of pockets do i want to do there's that extra layer of thinking and that's what's um what's amazing with a team like this that you really get yeah yeah, exactly. Exactly. So kudos, you guys, Daryl and Emily. Great job on everything that you've done. And uh, anyone watching this, please, please check them out. Um, Baker Posey, uh, their new website and also their Instagram account is really great. Okay. Um, so this next designer, she is also New Jersey based. We do not do um, any work for her, but like anything, like I was saying with uh, Instagram, you really feel like you get to know people. And I love scrolling Instagram. It's kind of like my little break of like looking at beautiful spaces when I just need a little bit of a timeout. And uh, Lori's Instagram page really caught my eye. This is uh, Lori Di Gia Como Interior. So this is Lori that we're featuring here. Um, like Mimi and Hill, their firm, she also had a similar room. That's what stopped me, like a monochromatic space. I'm not featuring that one. I was like, oh, I it's like, oh, this is really pretty. But I'm like, I can't do two similar spaces. But she also did something very similar um, to Mimi and Hill with the whole painting everything the same color, everything kind of all being the same. So it's really cool. So uh, her firm started in about 2006. So she's in the business 15 years. Does I high it. Yeah, it's just high-end luxury interior design out of, um, she's out of the Ridgewood uh, Hohokus area, but does projects all over. And uh, you could just really tell the high-end just from her finishes, the things that she's selecting, the furniture pieces that she's selecting, and the um, attention to detail. She does have a team, and uh, the project that I wanted to highlight is a dining room project again I these panels um, have a, a pattern to them and I love when we use pattern I'm obsessed with using patterns and different textures and things so um, and you know because I'm a hardware nerd loving how people how people use a drapery hardware in kind of funky angled spaces like this so it's right the, the light is kind of blocking the view but anytime you can figure out a way to get hardware, to move around like that and we could have just taken the simple way out of just doing like little um pieces of hardware just as wide as the stationary panels but i love it when we take the risk of following the shape yeah. you know and then especially like that's bringing it all work that's involved in that yeah there is a lot of extra work and a lot of times sometimes some designers and some clients don't always want to take that risk which is okay but me being the lover of hardware that I am. I love it when we take that risk. <laughs> so, and then pairing it with um, the woven woods inside mount, just kind of giving that different texture. I love the use of mixing the fabric with the texture. So it kind of breaks it up a little bit and it kind of just makes it all pop. I feel like the woven woods really make the fabric pop in the dining okay. room and the window treatments just act as a nice backdrop to the space. You know, a lot of times, sometimes I love the texture that she chose for the woven woods. They're very like high textured, um, right? Cloth, really, re really impressive how they stand out and the backdrop that they create for everything else. 
Yeah, and I like a lot of times what I'm finding with a lot of these solid colors that are being selected for hardware, you know, the French return rods, white cream mm -hmm. linen panels, which is fine. It's a really pretty look, um, but they're not always a showstopper in the room. To me, when I'm looking at this, it's like, oh, no, the window treatments are the crown jewel of the space. So that's what I, I love. Okay, yes, right? I do. <laughs> we are we're uh, we're totally unbiased opinion. We love exactly. when window treatments are the crown jewel. When the, you know, hi, I'm here. And I feel like that's what you're looking at when you're getting that. And you just you could just see the, the amount of layers that goes into it. And this is a perfect example of a layered look where we – they could have just gone with like a simple white Roman shade or gray Roman shade underneath, but going for that contrast of picking the natural woven woods with the grays and then even mixing the metals. You're going with that brass hardware, but the chandelier is the silver. You know, so thanks, Gina. Yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. Um, so that's what I love. It's, it's a great news. Yeah. <laughs> Gina is our biggest cheerleader and I love her and I miss you and I can't wait till I can give you a hug in person, Gina. Um, soon, hopefully soon. Um, but yeah, so I just love this whole look of highlighting the windows and really making them part of the star. In my eyes, it may not necessarily have been the point, but in my eyes, I feel like they are the star of the space. Great job. Lori did a fantastic job. Yes. All right. Next, I want to feature one of the designers that we work with here at Vitalia Inc. So this is Anita Householder and her company is House Edits. And uh, I had to like beg her for a picture this morning. <laughs> like, Anita, where's your website? I don't see a picture. No, where is it? <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Anita, for sharing That's this so picture. Funny. I think it's totally cute. So we love Anita around here. We've been working together for exactly a year, actually. We nice. first got together the day before lockdown. So March, what was it, like 16th or 17th of 2020. And she reached out to me because she heard me and Luann on her podcast. Oh, nice. Exactly. So she's like a, a direct result of the podcast. Sometimes you never know, you know, people call you and uh, they're like, well, we're not sure. Maybe it was a Facebook group. Maybe somebody said something. Maybe mm -hmm. I see you on Instagram. You know, there's a combination of, of everything, which is great too. But with Anita, it was incredibly specific. And uh, she even told me that she didn't realize initially that I was local. You know, she kind of thought, oh, I'm with Luann. I'm talking, wouldn't it be great if I were local? And then she's like, wait a second, she is local. I can call her. There you go. <laughs> so I am so happy that you did, Anita, because since then we've done, oh gosh, I don't even know, many, many projects. And right now we're working on many projects together as well. And it's been a true, true joy and pleasure. So easygoing, so talented, and mm -hmm. just, just, just a really overall pleasure to work with. So, um, what the project that I want to highlight here mm -hmm. is um, for a client that we we had finished, I think, what was it, around the summer or so? Um, or was it fall? My goodness, I'm losing um, track of time here. They all blend together. They all blend together. So so this was a project down the shore. I think you may be seeing a little um, sneak peek of the, of the, the ocean, ocean there. Mm -hmm. So, so this is a shore house and uh, also for a lovely, lovely client. And uh, of course, this is a little vignette of the project. And I'm pretty sure that Anita is going to be kind of like revealing it and uh, shooting it. And so hopefully we'll be collaborating on some of that photography. But this is in, in true... Um, like in, in tr true to any kind of uh, sure type of uh, interior design, you see some blues, you see a lot of uh, whites and some beiges and just um, a lot of those uh, neutral, lots of neutral colors, because I think the, the point is, is that the, the ocean is the backdrop and that's really the hero here and everything else really shouldn't, you know, get too busy into your eyes and uh, just the very peaceful, um, atmosphere that Anita created here is something that I, I, I'm just really proud of her for that and uh, really um, enjoying what she's done here. And I loved seeing pictures of this. So we, for this project, we did the, um, the shades. So these mm -hmm. were woven wood shades from, um, 
from a, a, a different vendor than what we usually use woven shades from. So we were very excited to find somebody new and somebody who could really support us on this project. And then we did um, a whole bunch of drapery for Anita as well. So you can um, see, you know, so speaking of monochromatic, right? So there's a lot of kind of like similar type of tones happening here. Again, mm -hmm. very peaceful, very serene. So the the design schematic that Anita created here is uh, is just, just lovely. And I know um, that the client is really loving it. And so are we. So love working with Anita. Please check her out on Instagram at House Edits. Um, her Instagram is amazing. And here's another example of taking risks and combining really awesome patterns together. I love that she uses uh, super funky patterns. She, she loves using um, a lot of Schumacher fabrics. And so mm -hmm. those are bold, high patterns yes. and, and bold colors. And then she takes that and combines it with really contrasting and funky and fun piping a lot of times. So really um, a lot of, j just a lot of fun working on her projects overall and just a pleasure to work with her in general. So we'll love Anita around here. Yeah, and it's always great when you get to meet designers um, through the podcast. We have met here at Window Works. We are very lucky um, with the podcast. We have met a lot of great designers because of the podcast, like um, Daniela Hoffer. From, um, we, she came to us via the uh, the podcast. So, okay. yeah, the first time that she called Window Works, Vin happened to pick up the phone. And just from hearing about the Vin man on the podcast, <laughs> um and then when I met her in person, she's like, it's a little surreal. I go, why? She goes, because I hear yeah. about you guys all the time. And then like, you know, meeting you in person or hearing Vinny on the phone. I'm like, yes, we are real people. We Luann didn't make <laughs> us up and we really do work for Window Works. And it's also, I get a kick out of when Luann is here, um, when Luann's here on uh, Mondays and Fridays. And if the phone's really busy and she plays back up on the phone and she answers the phone, you hear, you know, hello, Window Works, this is Luann. And then you could hear people on the other end and being like, wait, what? What, <laughs> Luann? It's really phone? you? Like, you're really there? It's like, yes, she really does own Window Works. She really <laughs> is here in the office. It's, it's not all like, you know, reality TV where they say they work there and things but like that. Really, yeah. it, but not really, you know. Um, so yeah, it's it's been it's been really great. Really yes, great. I can attest. Kim is real, and so is Luann, yeah. and so is Ben <laughs> Man, and everybody. Else <laughs> and so is Vita. You know, I felt from... them, touched them, gave them hugs at some yeah. point a year yeah. ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's it's really great. All right, you guys. So this concludes our episode for today. This is one of our favorite um, episodes to do. We love researching new designers or highlighting people that we're already working with. It's just, it gives us so much joy. Um, and so we cannot say goodbye without mentioning some of our uh, gifts for you, some of our yes. free goodies. So from Vitalia Inc., we have a special report that we create, or lookbook rather, that we created called 37 and a half ideas for you to uh, swipe steal and uh, you use immediately on your next design project. So definitely check it out at vitaliainc.com and you'll get lots of inspiration and lots of really cool ideas there. And uh, at Window Works, Luann wrote a kind of little ebook. Uh, it's, a, it's an ebook about uh, Window Treatment 101 and we called it Architectural Digest is Incoming. Um, you know, 10 things you need to know about window treatment. So if you're new to the window treatment game and you just have a couple questions, this is a really great uh, little tutorial on um cover she covers all topics window on the window treatments that's awesome and if you want to know what Luann is up to in the podcast yes. land, then definitely <laughs> check her out, a well-designed business podcast. I and mean, this is how this whole series started. We mm -hmm. first, Luann and I first started it on the podcast on Fridays every month, every other month or so. We have a series called WTF because who hasn't said WTF when doing window <laughs> treatment? Also oh, yes. translating to Window Treatment Friday, which is what <laughs> this is. This is the live <laughs> version of that. So, but definitely check out Luann with uh, everything that she's been doing on her podcast. Yes, and if you want to listen to the audio version of WTF, you could also do that too. And she has a lot of stuff going on. So follow her on Instagram so you can kind of keep up. You're part of Luann Yu, correct, Vita? I am part of Luann yeah. Yes, thank you so much. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> So there you go. There's a whole thing. Luann's doing a lot out there for the design community. So be sure to check it out. Follow along. There's a lot of great things that are coming down the pipeline.
All right, and to keep up with all things Window Works, follow us here on Facebook, on our Facebook page, uh, Window Works, and the same on Instagram. If you are in the New Jersey or New York area and you have a window treatment and awning project, please give us a call because we would be happy to assist you. We take all the guesswork out, wondering where I should put the rod, what kind of rod I need to order, will this fabric work, should I line and unline You know the, the treatment. We're here to help you out with all that and also with all of your awning needs. Hmm. Gina says, say more, Vita, about your class. Oh, sure. Hmm. Okay. We <laughs> 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 <You> insist. <laughs> All right, so um, th this semester I'm teaching a class for Luann that I specifically developed for her. It's called um, How to Scale Your Window Treatment Business to Your First mm -hmm. Million Dollar Year. And so essentially it is I am drawing on my own personal experience of how I've made an intentional and very conscious decision to grow and scale my own business and I have uh, how I have been ex decision for the past three years. A lot of it has to do with setting up processes, systems, there's technologies involved, uh, there's a whole people a component, finances of course are important and mm -hmm. uh, the one that gets overlooked the most but is equally important to everything else is right here, your mindset. So we're going to be going over those five pillars of scaling and the class is perfect for any window treatment professional who is trying to scale, usually goes from about 100,000 in revenue to about three, from three to five, and then five to a million. And uh, I love Gina. You're like prompting. Me. Like, can can you be like my producer? You can like give me cues. <laughs> Gina's good. Gina's the best. That's why we love yeah. that. That's <laughs> right. And and the way to sign up for the class is to go on LuannUniversity.com, and you can read a whole lot more about the class mm -hmm. you can register there as well the um, early bird special <laughs> ends on uh, March 25th which is next Thursday and my mm -hmm. class starts on April 8th and it goes for six weeks every Thursday starting um, April 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern Gina how did I do got to give me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> All right while you're doing that or thinking on that I'm gonna um, say that if to all the interior designers or window treatment pros listening to us, but specifically interior designers, which is who we service and cater to here at Vitalia Inc. If you are in the Philadelphia area and are looking for a partner to, um, to support you with window treatments, we are here to have your back to do what, um, whatever it is you need with, with regards to the help to, to, um, to, to the window treatments. We measure, we fabricate, we install, we project manage, we help you with product knowledge and everything in between. So if you're in the Philadelphia area and uh, looking for that partner, we are that VIP go-to concierge level white glove resource for interior designers ready to fly first class in terms of window treatments. Oh yeah, and we will travel. Our guys were just down, uh, our team was just down in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina last week. So wherever you need us to go, Window Works will travel for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and very similarly with uh, with Vitalia Inc. as well, we have a project down in Palm Beach um, installing three model homes either end of April or beginning of May. So we will go if, if you want us to travel, we shall do that too. Wherever <laughs> your window, yeah, wherever your window treatment needs are. Needs yeah. are. We will go. That's right. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Kim and I can banter about this forever. We have way too Oh, my gosh, Anita. Thank you for and featuring House Edits. That was too fun. Hi. You're the best. Vita and, and I feel so lucky to have you in my Aw, thank oh, you. Oh, that's nice. And Mimi and Hill, they're here. So hi. Oh. Hi, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Love your project. Yeah. Love having you guys here. Love yes. featuring you. Love working with you. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to spotlight you here. You know, if it wasn't for you and your talents and your beautiful work, we wouldn't have anyone to spotlight. <laughs> no. And also giving us the opportunity to do what we love to do, which is designing window treatments. So that's right. And geek out on hardware and everything else. Window All treatments, the like right? midgy things uh, that people no, are like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like oh my uh, god give me more <laughs> all, right. all right everyone have a great rest of your friday afternoon have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next friday because if it's friday it's wtf live window treatment live so join us every friday right here at 12 noon bye-bye everyone have a great weekend bye-bye <laughs>